but um, it's a lovely, vinyl is a lovely warm sound. The best thing about vinyl is that's pretty much going on. But I, I've got enough vinyl, I've got enough from those days, you know, pre-1982, and uh, I look very it, oh, that's wonderful. But I look through and go, oh, that's wonderful, and then go, oh, and pre it all over again. I'm guilty, I'm guilty, okay? Me too. I mean, but the beauty of the vinyl is, you know, I mean, did you feel the expectations? Like, you have 23 minutes aside, did you, were you thinking of those terms back then? Totally. Yeah, totally. You know, the number of songs, you get four or five songs on the side. He's still talking, trying to get this. That's why when they did the bonus tracks, which are, uh, with CDs, there's a reason why that crap wasn't on there to begin with. So it just made, yeah, it just got a lot of see that, that, that crap was on there. <laughs> <laughs> see, I have to go back to all the things. My, my, um, I just told you a story about going back to <coughs> So a guy who used to do special products for the movie Blues, and it was one of the worst mistakes we ever did. We, we had an album that was a movie released on QVC. And he said to me, I was in London, and he said, you come over, and you, take, you do the flight, you arrive refreshed, you take you straight to the uh, studio, we do a bit of makeup, you get on, this is 40 minutes after you've landed, and you get, and you, you sell, 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 this, and the, and the guy will be there talking about the album. And I said, now let's roll back a couple of things. So I'm on this aircraft from London to Los Angeles, and I arrived refreshed. <laughs> Have you ever been on, a, on an aeroplane and arrived refreshed? <laughs> of course I did. Keith, we got one guy from here. Right here. Right there, Dana. Right, Dana. Oh, sorry. Sorry, man. I'm going to go down. Uh, uh, so Justin, if I may, sure. Yeah. First of all, congratulations on your award. Um, another friend that I have is uh, Peter Asher, uh, who uh, is also honored to have a, the award that you have. I'm also going to mention George Mitchell, Senator from Maine, who brought peace to Ireland. And he was very proud of his award. I want to say congratulations. I also had a brother up to me, I was a friend of mine holding, and I, the question I have is this. I was very dear friends with Bobby Rydell, and I am friends with Frankie Avalon and Gregory Reed. And uh, you mentioned Bobby Rydell and the boys of Bandstand, I believe, when you were inducted into the Hall of Fame. Am I correct? Um, I mentioned the um, Man Cow, and uh, I think I mentioned the Night of the Nightbird, the DJs that were with us. Well, I, I remember you mentioning uh, those people, and the question I have of you, sir, is, yeah, are there any important people from America that influence the way you write those beautiful songs that you do? The, the last one of that question? Uh, yeah. Who, who most influenced you from the United States in oh. terms of while you were growing up? Oh, well, Buddy Holly. Of course. Thank you. Buddy Holly, the Ebelis. And uh, we could never be an Elvis, I knew that. But his, his records were great in the way that producers made them. Um, but Buddy Holly in the Elvis, and then not in the United States, but Cliff in the Shadows. But then the Beatles changed everything, didn't they? For me, anyway. I remember walking out of my front door when I heard, uh, just after I heard Love You Do, and I, I was walking down to the local library, and uh, I knew that the world was going to be different now that the Beatles were there. And that's a lovely feeling. But of course, America is the land of our heroes. Every, uh, every English uh, musician will, will say that. And uh, they should. And um, so to go to Lubbock, and um, I, thought, I thought Lubbock was going to be like Mayberry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize it's a big flat land with oil wells going on. So, um, there you go. Me and John left the plectrum on the, on the grave. And I said, John, you left one of mine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, ever and obviously, you want to talk with the Italian. I'd 
I like writing on my own. I, I, find, I don't find it ever works. So a lot of people have persuaded me to do that, but um, I've never thought anything really good really has come out of it. And I prefer to be the only person in the world at about 3 o'clock in the morning. And, um, and yes, that, that's it. It's that lonesome feeling when everybody else is asleep. That's what I like to work. Larry Baird, our arranger, when we went out with the 
the orchestra in the 90s, he wrote in that it was a studio cat running through the studio. <laughs> and knocked over a tree bell. And nobody said anything, you know. But that's the beautiful thing about when you guys, well, you know, the whole period of the 60s, 70s, you know, with Pro Tools, everything is just so perfect. And that, you know, on the grid, I hate it. And I mean, you hear that as you're talking about the yeah. kind of time things. I mean, that didn't exist, but it was the, the beauty, the humanity of, of music. You know, everything wasn't played to a you know, BPM. And yeah. That's why the legacy, you know, people would be talking about that record in a thousand years from now. The kids would be playing Nights and White Sad on Tuesday afternoon. It would be, it would be a, a part of the discussion of music history uh, thousands of years from now. I know you agree with me, right? Yeah. Right here. Hi, Justin. Uh, oh, okay. Um, that is in my face. Uh, now I know how Justin feels. Um, first of all, thank you so much for coming to Peterborough, Ontario, Canada, coming to the True North. Please come back again. It was phenomenal, and hopefully you had to fill up for the dairy's ice cream, because we know you like ice cream. So, this, uh, the other thing I'd like to mention is, time in with Knights of Wind Satin. On the voice, a wonderful singer did Knights of Wind Satin. And then a wonderful uh, classical guitarist from Toronto, Plato, did a concert in Santorini, Greece, and had a wonderful singer do Nights in White Sock, and I do believe it was in Greek. My question to you, Justin, is what um, feeling or what do you think of these accolades when you hear other singers singing Nights in White Satin, because that seems to be the song that other people tap into of yours. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, uh, there are so many different versions of them. I'm sent maybe one a week that somebody's done, just on, not, not on a compilation album or but cringe and this strings in the night kind of thing. That's usually what they, they are. And, but um, a couple of years ago, there was a girl called um, Betty Lovette, uh, a soul singer, and she did it. And her version made me hear it in a different way for the first time. E every lyric in Nights means something to me. I've spent my life trying to explain it. <laughs> but, uh, but it does mean something to me, even though the emotion passed over very quickly. But she made it something that me meant something to her, Betty. And her version is the very best. It really is. Yeah, I would recommend you get her name is Bette. B-E-T-T-A-E-A-Y-E, I think. Love it. She's beautiful. I'm very thrilled when people do it. Badly or nicely. Or anything. <laughs> I don't know. At least they, at least they know it. They take it down there? They honor. Oh, yeah, they that's honor. a good word. They honor. Do you know, it's, it's not really mine anymore because it's, uh, it kind of belongs to, uh, it, it, it belongs to the vibe of it. You know, we can play it perfectly in a sound check, but it doesn't have the magic until the, the crowd comes in because of the aura they bring with them and what it means to them. Go okay, Dana, I'm sorry. My favorite song you do is Land of Make Believe. That was a masterpiece. Thank you so much for that song. Um, I, I want to know if you have any favorites of your songs that, that you can make. Um, I, like, I like the kind of uh, obscure things. I like a lot of things that Mike did. You know, he left too soon. But I can see why he left. Conflict that was to never be resolved, and his life just was very different. But um, thank you. I for, I forgot about the land of May Goody, and um, I'm, I'm reminded of it now. Thank you.
Actually, we have one over here. Stay. Stay left. I'm over here. Your left. Rise over here. Over. Just a pleasure to meet you. And I speak for everybody when I say that you're a legend of our mind. And here's my question. About 10 years ago, I interviewed the Walker Brothers, and they discussed the package tours in England and what it was like to be waiting all day to get on stage for 20 minutes. And what he said to me was the most exciting part of the thing was playing cards backstage with Jimi Hendrix. And my question to you, which is way off the line of everyone else's, do you have any great memories of the glory days of the early 60s, of people you ran into, people you spoke to, things like that? Thank you so much. Well, we were very lucky to be in the time in London. I was in London before the other guys because I was working with a guitar player, a, guitar, um, a rock and roll singer called Marty Wilde. So I was there from 1964 onwards. But, um, and it was where it was all happening. Everybody from Manchester, even though they played on the thing, the identity of being from Manchester.